Today we begin the season of Advent, and it's very important uh, to try to understand the spirit of the season so that we might live it well for the next four weeks. Of course, Advent is symbolized by the Advent wreath, uh, which symbolizes time, the passing of time. So this Advent season is about how we spend our time. It's a wreath made of evergreen, which is always a symbol of life and of light. The candles bring light into darkness. So the Advent season, symbolized by the Advent wreath, is a time of light, it's a time of um, life, and it's about how we spend our time. I think the spirit is somewhat uh, summarized very well in the opening prayer which we sometimes don't pay much attention to. So I'd like to read that prayer again and see if this captures your spirit as we begin the season of Advent. This is what we said. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, in other words, grant to us, Almighty God, the resolve, which means a firm intention, to run forth to meet your Christ, so it's kind of an active waiting, isn't it? I mean, Advent is waiting for the coming of Christ. But we're told in this prayer that we're supposed to run forth to meet uh, the Lord's uh, anointed one, the Lord's Christ, with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand we may be worthy to possess the kingdom of heaven. Remember last Sunday's gospel about the goats being on the left and the sheep on the right? It's a, it's a, it was a the story of the gospel about judgment at the end of time. Well, we're praying in this reading that when the Lord comes, we'll run out to meet him and we'll have a place at his right side with the sheep and not on the left with the goats because of our, our active deeds of love and service to other people. And that's what the Advent season's about. It's preparing for the coming of the Lord. And traditionally, that coming of the Lord is talked about in three ways during Advent. The first, of course, is the Lord coming to us at the end of time. And there's two times that we think about. Our personal time, the Lord coming to us at the end of our lives. For some of us who are getting older, who have white hair, that might be sooner than we hope, you know. For others, it's going to take longer, but we, we Advent is a time to be conscious about the coming of the Lord to our lives at the end of our lives. And this is something that's difficult for people of the 21st century to think much about. You know, back in the Middle Ages and also in the Renaissance period, period there were um, societies in the Catholic Church that were focused on helping people to prepare for a good death. Can you imagine joining one of those societies today? And the reason for that is that life was more precarious in those days. The average lifespan was about 45 years. Uh, death came much more surprisingly and quickly to people because of common violence in the, in the community, but also because when people got the flu, they often died. Or when they got a bad cold, they got pneumonia and they died. And so life was much more precarious. And when life is precarious, which means it's at risk, we tend to take our lives much more seriously. And Advent is a time when we are called by the church to take our lives seriously. Not to be sad or afraid, but to live our lives better. During the Advent season, we also wait for the Lord to come at the end of history. You know, it's a time where we long for the Lord to take care of this world and make it better. Our opening uh, reading, which was a reading from the prophet Isaiah, put it this way. Listen to the longing of this man's words. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. I mean, there's a longing in those words that God 
would come and make this world better, to straighten things up. We've messed them up so much, we can't straighten it up on our own, and we need the Lord to come and change things. We know that God does that in His, in his own time. At the end of the world, we'll have a judgment when God sets everything straight. And the Advent season is a, a moment in the life of the church when we're all called to think about that and then to commit our si ourselves to living lives that change this world to make it a better place. Some say we even hasten the Lord's coming if we do our part to make the world ready for His coming. And that's part of the Advent spirit. A second coming of the Lord that we focus on in Advent is His first coming as a man in history, the first Christmas. And the closer we get to Christmas, the more the church focuses on that. You know, God loved us so much that He became one of us. And we prepare for that celebration during these four weeks of Advent. Now, you and I are going to be busy in many ways. Um, I sent out thousands of Christmas cards, actually. You probably sent out dozens or hundreds, but I sent out thousands because there are a lot of people in my family of the church. And I sent them out actually for you. I send a letter, a uh, Christmas card to the Pope every year and on behalf of the people of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. That's one of the cards that I send. But we'll be busy in many ways, buying gifts, thinking about the gifts that people are going to give us, all those kind of things at Christmas. And there's a danger we'll forget to prepare for the real meaning of Christmas, which is the celebration of the Lord's birth, the anniversary of His birth. So we ask the Lord in the Advent season to keep us focused on the right things rather than on ourselves. And that's a danger that can happen to us as we prepare for Christmas. And then the third coming of the Lord that we celebrate in the season of Advent is His coming to us when? Right now, every day, in our personal lives. And He comes often. We just don't pay attention. So we miss Him when He comes. He comes knocking on the door of our hearts through the needs of the poor, the anxiety of our spouse, the requirements of our neighbor for support and for love. I mean, the Lord reveals Himself in so many ways, and we don't see Him because we do not pay attention. And this paying attention is, in some sense, at the heart of the Advent season. It's a time when the church calls us to wake up and pay attention. One of the words that I uh, discovered today, is, not today, this week, as I was preparing for my homily, was a word we don't use very often in um, our common conversation. The word is torpid or torpidity. How many of you know what that word means? If I said you're torpid, is that a compliment? No, it's not. If I said you're a victim of torpidity, uh, what does that mean? You know. But this is what it means. You know, it's the opposite of Advent. This is what torpidity means. It means if you're torpid, it means you're inactive, you're lethargic, you're apathetic. It actually comes from a, a Latin word, tor torpere, which means to be stiff and not to be flexible, to be numb to be dormant, to hibernate. And all of that, those words that describe the word torpid are the anti-spirit to the season of Advent, which is to be attentive and to be awake, to respond, to be aware of the Lord who comes to us in so very, very many ways. We see this spirit in today's gospel reading where Jesus said to his disciples, and he's saying this to you and to me today, be watchful, be alert, not just be, be afraid of our death, it's about paying attention to life. Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work. 
and orders the gatekeeper to be on watch. This is the way Jesus is describing the community of the church. You know, after his death and resurrection and his ascension to the Father, the master of the house, the master of the church, has gone off to another place. You know, not really, I'm using symbolic language. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, which means you and me. You know, we are in charge of this world that God has given us in this time. And he's given each of us, as he says here, each our own work to do. I'm in charge of part of his responsibilities as the bishop of the diocese. You're responsible as the wife of that man next to you and those children who are sitting next to both of you. You know, you're responsible to, for the people who you teach in your school. You're responsible for your fellow students at school. I mean, each of us has his or her own responsibility in the world. And the Lord is calling us to be serious about the task of paying attention to our responsibilities. And are you doing that? Is, do you have the spirit of Advent in your own mind and in your own heart? Pay attention. Watch. These are the words of Jesus uh, to each of us today. And so Jesus wants to shake us up in the, in the season of Advent. It's a time for us to be stirred and to be challenged, to, to move away from any false security. You know, the reason we don't pay attention to God and serious things is because we have a false sense of security. You know, everything's going to, I'm going to, I'm in charge. Uh, nothing's nothing's going to happen because everything's just fine. The Lord wants us to be shaken up and to pay attention. I read um, a very interesting um, summary of, of uh, the virtue of hope uh, not too long ago where someone wrote, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We don't know what the future holds, which is true, right? But for, for those of us who are believers, we know who holds the future, and the person who holds the future is God, and that gives us hope, which is a confident trust in the future, because the future is in God's hands. So we, we ask the Lord in these days of preparation for Christmas to make us Advent people. Try to make your homes Advent homes where you pay attention in a very special way in this Advent season. You help your children and your spouse to pay attention with an intense kind of way. You know, today, in a, in a very special way, we are celebrating in advance the World Meeting of Families, which takes place here in Philadelphia next September. And I think when you came into church, some of you, at least some of you received an image of the Holy Family, which is a copy of this painting that's on the wall here at the front of our cathedral. It's a, it's a very beautiful painting by a member of our archdiocese. It pictures Jesus in the center with Mary and Joseph paying attention to their child. Uh, Mary's expression is kind of wondering what's going to happen to this young guy. And in the background, we see the grandparents, uh, the, the parents of Mary, Anne and Joachim, who are traditionally the names of the parents of, of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And this is a symbol of the most important unit in our personal lives, which is our families. You know, our, our parents, our grandparents, our children, our spouses, uh, this is where the action is. This is where Christian life is learned and practiced in the best possible ways. This image that you are taking home with you today is an image of the Holy Family. And you're called in your families to imitate them, to be holy in the same way that they are. And the way that happens is if you pay attention to the Lord, to Him, to your, to your neighbors, to your family members, you know, the people that he has entrusted to your care, and even to yourself, you know, to be serious about living life to its full. And if we enter into that spirit, when we celebrate Christmas in, in four weeks, 
will not, not only be celebrating an event in the past, we'll also be celebrating the rebirth of the Lord in our own lives, in our own families today. May the Lord bring to completion the good work He begins in our lives this evening.